In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Stretch and Squash modifier in 3ds Max and show you how to also animate it. So we're going to start off with the sphere. Um, one of them has 48 segments with a radius of 8, and the other one has um, 12 segments, so a uh, lower poly model. And I'm just going to compare the two, how they look with the Stretch modifier applied. So starting off with this one, that has 48 segments. Um, let's go ahead and type in Stretch press enter and you're gonna see you have a few parameters to work with so you can change the stretch axis along the X Y or Z planes um, and that will depend on how you want your object to deform so um, let's say I'm gonna start off at zero um, you can pretty much just adjust the stretch amount to whatever you want but if you want a um, walking effect if you want to make this into a character that's kind of like gonna blob around the street um, you can also animate this going forward. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to set this at 1. And I also want to add the stretch modifier to the low poly model and set this at 1. So as you can see, I'm going to turn off my edged faces. Um, having a higher resolution sphere to start off with is going to give you a smoother result. Um, but if you want to work with a low poly model, um, it shouldn't affect the quality of the modifier like it does other ones. So let's show you how to animate it. I'm going to turn on my auto key and let's say from frames 0 to 5, oh, let's actually start over. At frame 0 I want this stretch to be at 0. Um, by adjusting this amplify it only works when the stretch is actually applied um, it will adjust how much stretch or squash is actually applied. So from frame 0 to 5, I want my stretch to go to 0.5. From frames 5 to 10, I'm going to have this go to 1. From 10 to 15, let's have this go back down to 0.5. And from 15 to 20, we're going to have it go to 0. 20 to 25, we're going to have it go to negative 0 0.5. And then 30, we'll have it go back to 0. So what you can actually do is you can copy these keyframes for as long as you want. So let's actually go ahead and I'm going to delete the keyframe at 30. And I'm going to select this whole option here, hold down my shift key, and then drag this over to 30. Since we started off with 0, um, let's go ahead and play that. Turn off auto key. And you have a nice smooth animation there. Um, if you decide that you want to adjust um, the speed to make it go faster or slower, the more time you have in between your keyframes means the longer your animation is going to be. So let's say I increase this time here. It's going to look a little funny. but. Um, you'll see it slows down a little bit um, when it's going back into a stretch. So let's say, for instance, at 30, I want to turn on auto key and I want to amplify this just a little bit. Um, I want to make it more dramatic. Pretty much what that's saying is giving you the option instead of increasing the stretch, uh, it's allowing you to increase the amount of stretch that's happening in that given period of time. There we go. So um, really easy to do. This is great to use for a ball bouncing instead of trying to animate this uh, select and uniform scale over and over and over again. The stretch modifier is a great solution. So go ahead and try it out. Um, I do want you to actually record an animation of this. So the way that you're going to do that is we have copied this over um, 60 frames. You can do it over 100 if you want. And to render an animation, you're going to go to rendering, render setup. You're going to make sure that you're in production rendering mode. Um, you should not be in A360 cloud rendering, which is sometimes the default. Your renderer should be set to the NVIDIA Mental Ray. Um, sometimes it defaults to Scanline or uh, the new ART renderer. And we want to make sure that we are set to a range or active time segment. 
So active time segment is going to allow us to render our frame 0 to 100, which is what's present on our time slider here. Um, range will allow us to range to animate or render our, our animation from frame 0 to 60, which is how long our animation is. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. Um, our output size, you can just go ahead and say custom 640 by 480 is fairly standard. Um, and the most important part is you want to um, change your render output. So for me, I'm just going to go save it on my desktop. And I want to change it to an AVI. So that's going to save as a movie file. So save. Um, DV video encoder is okay for the compressor. And then you can say render. So you're going to see this pop up and it's going to render uh, 60 images over and over and over again. So kind of like a stop motion animation, how that's compiled. And when this is all done, you're going to see a video that is in your folder, wherever you saved it. And you can upload that to YouTube when you're done. So go ahead and try that out. If you have any questions about this, please leave comments in the video. Thank you.